so here we go again <laughs> building with fret season one episode one back to let's playing this game after all this time oh man all right so let's dive on in loading level preparing chunks here we go what will it give us this time Hmm. Very, very interesting. Well, how about this then? Okay. Here we are then in the world for the first time. The sun is rising. It's a new day. The first day in our world here and wow here we go again <laughs> okay oh my goodness i i appear to have lost my clothes at some point i uh, i no longer have any clothes and i break my arms every few seconds but we're okay everything's gonna be fine Everything is going to be fine. I, I trust you. We're going to have to get some clothes at some point. Oh my. Okay. I have just been left out here in the middle of nowhere. But naked. We will get to that, I am sure. Okay. Just drop down the mouse sensitivity a little bit. And it's time to punch our first tree in this world. It's time to to get ourselves some wood. If you're not familiar with this game, I don't know how you could not be familiar with this game, but if you are not, the first thing you do is you go up to a tree and you punch it. You hold your left mouse button down and you get wood from it. This will decay away into uh, to saplings here shortly. I just made myself a crafting bench. I made some planks out of that log uh all those logs and now we are going to make a wooden pickaxe because we are going to need some stone there's a piggy over there who's um having some ai problems it's fair to say <laughs> he's uh yeah he's having some issues <laughs> okay so this is not going to be a tutorial of how to play this game uh, the first thing I want to kind of do here is get my bearings, get some supplies going. And we're going to spend some time today on our first day talking about uh, building with fret. What is it? What are we going to do? And what is this all about? So, here's some, uh, here's some stone. This might serve as my first little shelter as well. You may notice that the Minecraft you know looks ever so slightly different. And that is because we are starting in a Minecraft Inf Dev. You can see it up there in the top left. Very cool. Uh, which I think is very exciting. But we're not going to be staying in Minecraft Inf Dev. We are going to be updating through different versions of the game until we hit, as of the time of this recording and streaming, 1.20.4, I believe it is now. Uh, many, many years, of course, from now. But uh, hopefully you will join me for the ride here. Just getting a bunch of stone. I'm actually going to save my first wooden pickaxe, and we'll talk about that later. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to a stone one, like so. We have a place here. Now, I also want to make a few other things. Let's make a sword. That's going to be useful. I hear pigs outside, so we might be able to get some food from them. A shovel is always good to have. And I want a couple of axes. So that we can cut down some more trees, get some more wood going. So I know that um, you, you probably have questions, and I'm going to answer those questions as best as I can in the coming coming segments here. Uh, there is some coal up there I uh, I do want, actually, as well. So, uh, huh, man, there's no, uh, no number keys to switch the items. That's uh, a little weird. <laughs> okay, one coal. 
Well, it's better than nothing, I suppose. I can make four torches out of that when we uh, when we need it. Oop. Get me up here. Where are you, piggy? There you are. Our first pig. And we got nothing. Wow, I just one-shot him. Damn. Okay. So let me talk a little bit then about why InfDev... You know, this is a building series, right? This is a building series, so why are we starting on a version that doesn't really have any, uh, any building options? Well, I think it's going to be... That's a lot of sheep! Oh my goodness me, that is a lot of sheep. Uh, I think it's going to be fun and interesting to start on a version that has very little, and over time we will be able to add a new blocks and new items and new ways of doing things to our repertoire, if you will. And we can kind of learn while adding things at a new... at new times, whenever I feel like we need something new and fresh. We get the best of the old generation and how things used to be. And we can learn and grow together with the game. I think that's fun. Okay, we got some meats. We got 21 wool out of that. That's not bad going. Let's move away from those sheep a little bit so I can continue to talk to you. Uh, so that's why we're starting in InfDev. I've also always wanted to kind of do one of these, playing through the different versions and experience versions before I started playing, revisit versions that I have actually played in the past. And I, I think it's going to be interesting because the kind of things we're able to build are going to be pretty heavily shaped by the environment around us and the stage in the game around us. It's also going to be a unique challenge, actually, in order to try and work our way around some of it. Uh, okay. So... Uh, you may also notice, if you are familiar with the InfDev, or Alpha, or Beta, or early release versions of the game, these are not the textures that started the game. These are the modern, or Japper, textures, as they're better well known. So, why have I chosen to change the textures? I don't like the old textures as much. It's a building series, so I'd like to kind of have things... Uh, that match what the game looks like now, where possible. Uh, so we've got a good idea of what things look like. And I just think that because we are so limited in terms of what we can and can't use, and I'll get into that here in a moment, having the ability to at least have some textures that blend together is going to be a must. Uh, so I have indeed updated the textures. This is not a texture pack. Texture packs did not exist yet. I have had to modify the jar file in order to in order to pull that off. There's a little bit of a cave there, but nothing in it. It doesn't look like. Eventually, we will get access to texture packs and that type of thing. I'm not sure yet whether or not I will actually be able to release the texture pack. I don't know where Mojang stands on that kind of stuff, you know, with using their textures in packs. Um... Except for the tools. The tools are from Painterly, originally. There's a bunch more sheep over there. I, I want to try and get that. One resource we're going to need a lot of is wool. For our various early builds here. So for episode one, I want to set down a marker of where we are going to be at so far. You know, and, and kind of begin the series with a bang. And I have a, a build in mind already, you know. Uh, what could be better than building a starter house in episode one? But that's not all we're going to do. Uh, before we get to that point, we're going to need to go ahead and get ourselves some essentials rolling. Uh, we're going to want to to get ourselves some better tools. We're going to want to kind of explore the world a little bit, get the lay of the land some. So that's going to involve doing some mining gonna explore some caves we're gonna get a tree farm going as basic as it might be we'll get a tree farm going and 
Once we've got all of those supplies, we'll be able to build that house. So, uh, the sun is beginning to set. What I would like to do, if possible, is try and find a little bit of a cave somewhere in the area that we could maybe dip into for the night and start and... There's some more coal there. Start and explore that some. So we can be getting some resources through the night. There are no beds at this point, so we cannot pass the night. The night is something we will have to deal with. And trust me, it's dark and scary out there. You don't want to be out at night, I can tell you. If you can even see anything. So let's see if we can find a little cave before it gets too, too dark. Up in here. Oof. This world is not completely unknown to me. Uh, I did spend some time generating out worlds, looking for a good seed for us to start on that would have some interesting terrain and some interesting areas to do our builds on. Well, this looks promising. There's iron in here. Yes, yes, this looks very promising. Okay. Cool. Let's make some of these. I've got plenty of wood to last me a good while this night, so put some of these down here. Start lighting this up. Lots of iron in here, which is excellent. So I am familiar with the seed, although I do not know, you know, where there's diamonds, for example, or where good cave systems are. I just have a good lay of the land on the surface level. There's a water source there. We might get a bucket of water out of that. And it goes down deeper too. Excellent. So, let's get this. Now, in this version of the game, there are not seeds that you can enter in the menu to recreate the world. Oh, it goes on that way too. Instead, you have to use something called NBT Edit to view the seed. Uh, so, what I will do is down below in the description, or if you just ask for it on Twitch, I will provide a world download to this particular world. And you will need... Oh man, this goes many ways. Okay. You will need Infdev 617, I believe it is, to start playing along. You can also uh, regen the uh, the world in a more recent version if you want using I think everything all the way up to alpha 1.1 and that is gonna be it. Uh, then, then the terrain gem changes. So let's talk a little bit more in depth then about what we don't have access to. I want everybody to kind of understand just how far back in time we are. So at this point in the game's development, we are in June 2010. The game hasn't even hit alpha yet. We are playing Java Edition, if there was any doubt about that. It is Java Edition. Um, I've got to be careful here because there's no sneaking. <laughs> That's not in the game yet. Uh, pretty much, if you could think of something in this game, unless it's very, very basic, it doesn't exist. Uh, it probably doesn't exist. There's no enchanting, there's no potions, there's no breeding. Uh, at this stage of the game, there is no biomes, there is no... Oh my... Uh, this is, <laughs> there's so many things that there isn't. I mean, I could be here for ages. Obviously, there's no netherite. There's no nether at this stage, so there's no point even talking about anything in the nether because there isn't anything there. The nether doesn't exist yet. Uh, we'll save that now. Uh, there is no... Obviously, there's no repairing because there's no anvil. There's not even the 2x2 two two repairing. 
I don't even know if that's still in the game in the crafting grid or not. That doesn't exist. Uh, diamonds are extremely rare. Uh, there is not Herobrine. There is not... Um, there's not many, many building blocks. There's, like I said, there's no sneaking. Uh... There's no sprinting, bows work completely differently, uh, there's no cows yet, there's no chickens yet. Uh, caves are brand spanking new in this inf dev here, they've only just been added. Uh, you're only just able to pick up um, water and lava in a bucket, that's, that's how old we are now. <laughs> uh, this is pretty much as far back as you can go, there are a couple of patches. Oh, it's eerily quiet in here. Eerily quiet. Uh, blocks like gravel. Well, they do fall, but they aren't animated. That's interesting. There's no mobs down in here at all. Which is surprising. Uh, there's no sensitivity, uh, there's no volume slider, you just have sound and music on or off. Wow, this is a big cave system. Goodness. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's no F3, really. Uh, yeah, there's nothing. You can't take screenshots. Uh, obviously there's no end dimension, there's no elytra. Uh, there's no minecarts, there's no boats, there's no cactus. Farming consists of wheat and nothing else. There's no bats. Food does not stack. Um... I'm pretty sure all the main mobs we know and love are in the game. Overworld mobs, that is. Skeletons exist, spiders exist, zombies exist. Uh, and so on. They all exist, but there is no witches. Um, no stone bricks. <laughs> uh, there's no sandstone, there's no stained glass, there's no hardened clay. There's no clay uh, at this stage. There's no bricks, no reeds, no books. Uh, there's only one type of slab. No uh, dyed wall, no dyes. No redstone, no lapis. No redstone gadgetry, so there's no buttons and anything else. You know, iron doors, that type of thing. Nothing like that yet. Uh, no clock, no compass, no bed, like we talked about. There is no uh, jungle biome, obviously, because there's no biomes. No cats, no dogs. No ender chest, no ender men. Uh, n no structures underground. So no mine shafts, no strongholds. No wither boss. By extension, no beacons. <laughs> there is no. Um, Oops, well, okay, I guess I have a hoe now, but that'll come in handy later. <laughs> we'll be using that later. Uh, yeah, this goes down deep. Oh, we want to pick all this up. I don't want to forget about it. Um, block reach is, is less. Uh, there's no different types of wood, no different colored planks. Uh, there's not even cobble and oak stairs yet. There's, there's no stairs in the game. That, this is just it. There's this, four blocks and slabs. And they're only one type of slab. 
and that's it. Uh, obviously, uh, no Ocean Temple, no Prismarine, uh, no Purpur. Pretty much everything that the game has to offer, you've seen already in the first 15-20 minutes uh, of this. With the exception of Diamonds, pretty much seen everything this game has to offer at this point. Uh, so it's going to be extremely challenging early on. I want to see if we can get down low here and see if we can look out and find... Some diamonds. Mushrooms are a thing that's in the game. We do have those. You can't grow them, though. They do not spread. Obsidian is in the game. Uh, that's pretty much brand new uh, at this stage. What we got down here? It's a big area down here. We're right at the bottom of the earth now. Got to be careful you don't get lost down in here, that's... Uh, mushrooms, and I guess you could carry wheat on you to make more bread. I don't like exploring up like that. You get things on your head. I'm surprised. We're not on peaceful, are we? No, we're on hard. But I've not seen a single hostile yet. I have a feeling that the spawning algorithm is a little bit different to what we're used to. Even even in early versions of the game, I think the spawning algorithm does change in a couple of patches. Another question I'm sure you're thinking about is how are we going to update or when are we going to update? I have a plan for that, as far as the uh, how goes. As far as the when goes, pretty much whenever I feel like we, we should move on, there's not going to be a specific period of time pass uh, between each patch. It's not like I'm aiming to produce a certain number of videos per month or something like that. You know, these builds take time. That. Oh, I think it was just the lava. These builds take time, and it's going to take us time to to come up with interesting ideas. Now, what I want to get from this series for everyone is the ability to. Oh, we do get torches back. Okay. To be able to kind of learn some techniques and some ideas to apply to your own builds. This is not going to be the sort of thing, you know, here's a build, copy it block by block. That's not what this series is all about. This is all about giving you the techniques that I've learned, the secret sauce, if you will, uh, in order to, to be the best you can. Now, I'm still learning all the time. I will evolve over the course of this series and beyond. Nothing. But together, together, we will hopefully improve, and I can share what I've learned thus far in my journey. So a little bit about me. I am Fret, of course. I have been playing this game now for over 10 years, uh, on and off. I used to have a, a Let's Play a long time ago. Oh, here we go. Ooh. Our first enemies. Hello. Oh yes, there's no monster hurt noises yet. Zombies drop feathers. That's going to be kind of weird, actually. The only noises that monsters are going to give you is the walking sound. And splashing about. 
That's gonna make skeletons terrifying. There's a pig down in here. Uh, it's still nighttime out there. I think this is where we came down, actually. Uh, let's stop for a moment. Oh, we got a perfect stack of coal. Well, how about that? We got 38 iron. We should definitely start thinking about cooking that up. I want to cook up my food as well. Oh, yeah, there's no dungeons yet. So no mossy cobble. That's soon, but not yet. So we will need to go out and explore new terrain in order to get new features. But we will always have this old terrain as well to build in and work in. I'm very excited. I think this is going to be an awesome adventure together. Uh, I don't want to rush it. I want to enjoy it. I want to make sure that we come up with interesting builds and this is going to be split over YouTube. I'm going to edit some videos on on YouTube and obviously on my live stream as well, which is where we will do most of the actual creative stuff, you know, from planning things out in a creative world to actually building them here. And while this series is called Building with Fret, and of course there is going to be building, building by the boatload in this, we will be dipping into some other stuff too, some adventure things. Oh look, our first gold here. Uh, we will be dipping into... into redstone some as well. This is some crazy cave going on up in here. I feel like every which way there's there's more to more to light up. Lots and lots of iron. Everywhere you turn there's more. I didn't realize caves were this extreme this far back. Oh my goodness. This is a labyrinth down in here. We only need to get some basic resources. I was hoping to get some diamonds, but I didn't see any down there. Diamonds are going to be extremely hard to get in this. But that's okay. We will, we will get there in the end. For now, iron is probably going to be our best friend, as far as getting materials goes. Oh, another big drop down into nothing. Wow. That is that is a very big drop down into nothing. I can't even look down there. Of course, another priority will be getting some clothes. I think that's going to be important. We do have some wool, though, so we might be able to tailor ourselves up something here pretty soon. I've really tried to put a lot of thought into this, and will continue to do so while ever we continue on with this series. Because I want it to be interesting, I want it to have value. And I think the more you plan and the more you think about something, the better the end result ends up being. As to what we could make. I knew I heard something walking about down there. Okay, I think I want to get back to a place of safety. And begin to prepare some supplies. Excellent, we're getting our iron cooking here. I'm actually going to split this up a little bit into multiple furnaces. 
and we'll start cooking up our meat as well. Now, I've got to kind of observe the meat because it's unstackable. I could only put in one thing at a time here. We're going to use planks. But we should be able to start getting ourselves some iron tools going pretty soon, which is going to be awesome. One thing we're probably going to want to set up pretty early on, obviously, is a tree farm, not only just for the logs that that's going to generate for us, but also it's going to be very useful for planks, which we can use as our primary fuel source. We can't make charcoal. Lava, I don't think, can be used in furnaces yet either. Um, sticks can. Sticks may be the most efficient way of cooking. But planks would let you do more over time. Uh, you wouldn't have to fill it quite as much to do, uh, do anything like that. Now, we've got options here. Armor in this particular version we can make with wool. So we could make uh, cloth here. Or we could go for iron, which will last a little bit longer but probably not as much use resource-wise. So that's something we will need to consider. Okay, 21 iron ingots in this one, and 11 in here, that gives us 32. Let's make our first iron pickaxe. Look at that bad boy, he's ready for some action. And why don't we go ahead and get ourselves an iron sword. And, oh, I didn't cook that meat. Let's uh, go ahead and get that guy going. We'll go ahead and make an iron shovel as well. If you want a breakdown of how tool durabilities work, wood is... 30, I think, or 33, somewhere there. Uh, stone is 64. Iron is 128. And diamond is 513 at the moment. Diamond receives many uh, buffs in upcoming patches to make it last longer. Uh, all the other tools get a buff in one of the future patches as well to make them last about twice as long as what they do now. Still nighttime out there. Still plenty of sheep. Okay. So I'm going to save the first of tools and armor and that type of thing for a project I have in mind later. But anything else, and probably the first workbench, furnace, and chest. But beyond that, I'm not going to save like every individual first thing, like first pork chop or whatever. I don't know which one it is anymore anyway. So... We don't need to carry all of this meat on us at the moment. I'm going to leave some of it behind in a chest here. This is going to be kind of our working forward base for now. Uh, we've got probably only a couple of minutes again until daylight. We'll let that finish. There's some coal there we can snag. We'll just do a little bit of mining here. I don't want to get too caught up, though, in, in splunking because... We'll lose our daylight, and we don't have that much of it, so... Okay, that's gone. We'll move on to this, then. I love this part of the game. You're starting out fresh. Everything's new. You've got so much potential. Oh, we should make a bucket, actually, too. That's something we should definitely consider doing. Is uh, is adding a bucket to our list of things for water and for lava. So, getting a couple of those definitely on my agenda. It's good to know that there is a really good cave system over here that will have plenty of resources for us starting out. 
I will feel more comfortable when we have a bow, although getting a supply of arrows is going to be pretty challenging. I don't think flint is actually in the game yet, so you craft arrows with iron ingots instead, which makes them a lot more expensive than they are currently, and we also need a supply of feathers. Um, once we get a, a mob farm established, which is another thing we will probably want to set up pretty early on here, we will be hopefully okay. Is it daytime? It's becoming daytime. Okay, so let's get the lay of the land here a little bit. Uh, we'll put these away. We're going to be heading topside, so I don't think we need too, too much. I do want to bring some cobble, though, with us, because I want to put some markers down for different locations. Might also make some signs. I want to kind of give you a, a feel for the world here, get a lay of the land, see what's around. There we go. So let's head out and do a little bit of exploring here on this new day. to kind of move away from these trees a little bit. We know roughly where our area is. I can memorize that. So this little sand area right here is our original spawn point. It's just over here. This is uh, original spawn. I'll get the wool where I see it. So somewhere around here is original spawn. And we'll put a marker on this for now. We'll probably eventually change it up with something, but for now, that is where that's going to go. Oh, I left my wood behind, dang it. Well, we can get more. <laughs> okay, now... As far as how signs work, I know they work differently. So we're going to have to kind of figure this one out. There's a sign. Oh, it's huge. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. I was not expecting that. So this is spawn. <laughs> Even I'm still discovering unique things here that I didn't know about. So let's take a look around this valley here and see what we've got. Uh, we're going to head this way first. Okay. So we've got this big lake that's kind of central to everything. Which I think looks very, very cool. a lava and water feature over there and then there's a almost like a little doorway an overhang of sorts that goes off that direction you can probably take a look see what's over there if anything anything through this doorway Ooh, a very cool looking area. Some big overhangs and then not much beyond it. But very cool. 
We would have to continue exploring further that way if we wanted. More piggies. I don't think I'm going to fill my inventory with, with that right now. That is a lot of pigs. How many is that? Three, six, nine, ten, is eleven. Animal spawning seems a bit excessive at this stage. Oops, took my first little bit of damage. So this area is going to be the location of our main settlement. My, uh, my first build idea consists of three or four little settlements in our first kingdom here. So we're going to put main settlement down here. And they consist of three basic things, all three of which do exist in this game. Forestry, dealing with trees, mining, and farming. And we're going to kind of create different themed little town settlements for each of those ideas. Build them up into their own little unique communities. And they're all part of kind of the same kingdom. Now then, up here on this hill... On the far side of the lake from spawn. Again, our original spawn point. You could just about make out the cobble. If I look in my peripheral, it's just that way. Uh, we are going to... We're going to set up another pillar here. This is going to be the site of our first castle. Eventually. Some ways away from, from that yet. But uh, we can set something up here for this. Swap this out for this. I'm going to have to cut down another tree here. There we go. Yes, I do not have enough wood yet to make, make another two signs so we've got more than one ready to go so this will be our castle site and then if we move our way around the lake further there's this cool looking overhang area here Ooh. out More caves yet to be explored. What time of day is it? Just past midday. There's some red mushrooms there. Probably pick those up on our adventures here. We are going to need one of each mushroom type for a project I have in mind. Four. Beginnings of another cave system there. A big overhang here. No hostiles living under it though. At the moment. I'm sure there will be eventually. <laughs> Which means I'm going to hightail it for now. Oh, more sheep. That's good. Okay, we got these. Oop. Don't want to miss any wool now. Now up in this area, I want to set up a forestry settlement amongst all these thick trees. I'll probably use the sandbar as a good place to set it up. And 
we might just have time to set up where our mining settlement is going to be. We're actually right back at the, the base now. But it's going to be in this direction, a little bit further out. Just a touch. We'll come back to this area as well. This area is going to be the location of our base eventually. Not far from the, the main spawn point, of course. I think we're probably going to be out of time, actually, for exploring over there this day and put in another sign up. I don't want to get caught out in the middle of the night uh, and get myself killed. So we might take a trip out that way in a new day. But you kind of get the idea of what I'm aiming for is we're going to put structures all around this central lake and the central lake will be like the origin point, the center of the world almost. And everything will kind of build out from that, which I think is going to be very cool. So as far as what the next steps are to get to where we need to get to, we need resources and lots of them. We need cobble, lots of it. We need gravel, some of it. We need dirt. We need tools. Yeah, it's becoming nighttime again. We need slabs. We need smooth stone for this first build I have in mind. So we're going to have to spend a bunch of time now kind of just going through and, and collecting supplies. That's going to be the, the first step here. Some more iron there. Just go back down. <gasps> There's some diamonds here. Oh my goodness, our first diamonds. So, let's make it safe. Oh my goodness, there they are. There they are. Is there any more? I don't think so. Oh my, okay, beautiful, that is a beautiful sight to see down here, it was worth it coming over here, there's a little weird spot back here too, you think there's some more back here, wouldn't that be awesome if there was, there isn't though, <laughs> that would have been awesome. Uh, obviously this, there's not going to be any up here. This is too high up, but not to worry. It doesn't matter. We now have our first set of diamonds. How many we got in here? Let's take a look. It's probably going to be one, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes. It is one. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. Oh my gosh, these caves are huge. Everywhere you turn, there's just more giant cave going on here. This is crazy. All right, let's go mine our first diamond. There it is. Woohoo! <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay. Okay. Well, one is better than none, but I, I can't do any... Well, I can make a shovel out of it, I suppose. I could do that. Ooh. Very nice. There is more diamonds over here. Awesome. Okay. Ah, there is more than one this time. Ah, there is three. I don't think there's any others I'm missing. Three diamonds, once again. Oof, yeah, I don't want to fall down in the lava and lose them immediately. I'm surprised I didn't see those. I, uh, 
I lit this up previously. Huh. Well, there we go then. Three more. Excellent. Okay, so uh, we are going to make our way over now to where we are going to set up the build. Our very first build. This can continue to be cooking while I'm moving stuff here. Uh, I'm going to make more chests, actually, before I go. We can just set up some over there, then. It's going to be easier. So we'll bring that. And on my first run here, I'm going to bring probably two rows of cobble to the site. So, while I am getting this stuff together, I want to talk about to you about building. This is going to be our first little building lesson here. I want to talk a little bit about how I've come up with this particular build that we're going to do, our starter house, and how I tend to do a number of my builds actually, and something that might be useful for you as well. This is like the first of the secret sauce. And believe it or not, it's references. Uh, whenever I'm trying to design something that looks interesting, one of the best places to start is references. And what do I mean by references? Well, it can be as simple as just typing in Google Images what it is you want to build and looking at what's already out there. That could be in the real world or it could be in Minecraft. Uh, you could look at a combination of both. I like to build a lot of medieval things. So, looking at medieval websites and history websites uh, is something that I've found incredibly useful. I'm also using image websites, so think about places like uh, DeviantArt is a good place to look. And more recently, I have been doing a lot of work on ArtStation, looking around, seeing uh, what exists. And I found this really cool piece of concept art that someone had designed. Uh, his name is... Yusuf Artem. And I will put an image on the screen in the video. Uh, so you can see it. And I'll put a, a link in the description as well. So you can see the original piece of art that Yusuf did. And I really liked the the shape and the design for it. And I was like, I want to recreate this kind of in Minecraft. And it looked like the perfect, perfect little starter house for us. The location for it is going to be right up in this area. We've got kind of the hills in the background. Uh, this is eventually going to be where a roadway goes through. So uh, there's a little bit something there that we might need to fill in. We're going to start it right up in this area. We'll have to clear the trees out. I'm going to put my chests down here. I wish we had an alternative way of moving items around. Horses or minecarts or something. <laughs> but we don't have anything yet. Uh, but we will put that there for now and we'll go back. The extra wood we get from this will be helpful. So we'll have to level out the land a little bit too. Probably that little circle there needs filling in, and that little bit needs leveling out. And the importance of references is that it gives you some inspiration. You'll be surprised, even the most prominent and best builders that are out there always look for references. And by recreating something that you've seen in Minecraft, you're kind of adding to the cycle, and then someone else might see what you've made and get inspired to change things about it. And it's a big cycle, really, of, of being able to contribute and receive and, and contribute. Um, it's very, very difficult to build particularly anything large-scale without any kind of idea going into it. 
So typically I will get a reference like that, particular reference there from, from Yusuf. And then I'll sort of sketch out in a creative world uh, how I want the building to look. So I'll take something like colored wool, for example, um, of different, uh, different colors, and I will design a shape using the reference as a example. And the shape itself uh, is something that you can very easily tweak then with the different colored wall blocks. You want things to all be in proportion with each other. You want to make sure it flows correctly. You want to get a good idea of what sort of footprint you're going to be working with. And once you've got all of that in place and you've done your wireframe, you could also fill it in if you wanted to, to get a, a better feel for shapes. I do recommend doing that if you are dealing with fancy roofs and that type of thing. It could be really good to just do a full, complete... Um, design rather than just a wireframe. Then after that, you want to start picking out your textures and, and how you're going to do texturing and that type of thing. Now, in our case, uh, there's very, very limited options for texturing. We will cover texturing more in future streams and episodes, and I will share with you how I do texturing for things. Um, but you would pick out the blocks you want to use. In this particular build, our options are extremely limited to cobblestone, logs, wood, uh, smooth stone, gravel, dirt, you know. So there's not much in the way of, of texturing we can do here. But you can kind of put together a, a block palette, if you will. And we'll talk about that and I'll show you how to do that in the future. And then, then you start and actually either using the reference or adding your own creative flair or maybe even a bit of both. You know, you start filling in the wireframe you've made and you start thinking about how to texture things, adding little bits of depth and completing the build, really. That's kind of, that's what I do. I cannot recommend enough. Use a creative world. No matter whether you're playing old Minecraft or whether you're playing new Minecraft, it saves so much time. Bonus points to you if you get something like World Edit installed because that will save you even more time and you can you can even do little bits of texturing with that using the fill command and percentages. You can really get a feel very, very quickly for things. World Edit also helps with tileable things as well. So you can definitely set something up and then, for example, you've done a, a piece of wall and then you want to tile it and see what it looks like over a wider area. World Edit is very good for that. So I highly encourage you to install and mess around with that on a, uh, on a super flat creative world. One thing you can also do, I haven't done with this build, but I will be doing for future builds, is actually take a, a backup of your survival world and transfer it, make a copy, and add it to your profile where you have world edit and creative mode. And then you can actually see what your builds look like in the world. If you want to use a mod um, like Light Matica in the modern versions of the game, then you can actually preview your build in the world, or you can directly paste it in, in a creative copy, and just get a feel for what it might look like. Uh, without having to do all the work. I like gathering the resources and putting it together manually in the end. That's what's fun to me after designing something. But really, to get something that looks good, the ability to fly around it, the ability to have unlimited materials to change things out on the fly, uh, you know, you could fly back very quickly and get a view from a distance, which is also something that's very important. All of these things kind of add up and they really make the whole process a lot lot easier but my main point of this particular lesson is references take advantage of them no matter you're building modern you're building medieval you're building victorian there's always something out there there's always something good to look at there's lots of historical references there's lots of videos uh, sometimes if you're if you're trying to design a a building that has some sort of function maybe look at how a building like that did function when I wanted to build a windmill previously I looked at how one worked 
and you know how water wheels work and, and it can really get you inspired and get the creative juices flowing so don't forget to take advantage of references you may also if you are so inclined want to actually sketch things out on a piece of paper or in photoshop or something before you start using the reference you might want to frame things up uh, and add your own creative flair to it those who are more artistic out there uh, may find it easier to actually paint or draw a building and then recreate it in minecraft uh, you get a lot more finer details available to you when you have access to uh, a pen and paper or or Photoshop. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about terraforming. I have just managed to get a whole bunch of dirt here from down in my mines. Uh, as I'm building this starter house here, I want to make sure that the terrain around it is suitable and able to be easily accessed and so that the build makes sense. I wanted to share with you a little bit of how I do my terraforming on a small hill like this. So I've got the natural Minecraft landscape here and I'm working with that. I'm not building completely custom terrain here. So I'll pick a spot. Uh, usually I start from the, the highest point, which for me was this one right here. And then I kind of go out in sections. One, two, three, and then five. Back down to three, back up to five, seven, and then five, and then back to the terrain again. And I, I did that for each of these levels here. I sort of create guidelines, and then I can fill the uh, the blocks in, which is what I'm about to do here. But what what I wanted to share with you, the little, little tip here for terraforming, is try and use numbers one, two, three, five, and seven. Generally, you don't want to go above seven because then the terrain starts to look very straight and flat. And work your way around in shapes to kind of create rolling hills. Always go up and go down. Don't go, for example, from seven to two because it's going to look too jarring. Always try and cycle up and down the numbers where you can. And you'll create some very interesting shapes here which you can then fill in. Now, if you're doing even larger terrain than this, uh, and I'm talking much larger, you might also want to add some perpendicular lines between each layer that you create and the next one, and then you can kind of fill in between each of those lines. But uh, this is how I'm doing this, and I'll show you the end result when I've finished it. This is what the end result looks like, which I think is pretty nice and natural looking the grass is still going to spread in a few tiles yet but generally generally it's looking pretty good now and we've got a nice area here for running a path through later or working on detailing the environment maybe with some custom trees eventually that type of thing but for now it's time to actually get to work on building our starter house so i'm gonna get to that Okay, and there we have it. That took absolutely no time at all, but it's gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. What a starter house for us. So like I said previously, I wanted to lay down a marker in this episode of where we're at with our building skills now. And try and improve on from this. Ooh, feather in the episodes to follow. So let's go take a little bit of a tour. Uh, this is the result of about four or five days worth of work on and off on the live stream between the gathering materials. So I reshaped all the terrain. We've got a nice little garden here with the limited options we have. Uh, this is our entrance. Got a little bit of texturing going on here with the cobble and the gravel. Let's take a look inside. Wow, isn't this just beautiful in here? I thought I'd do something interesting and kind of pattern the rug here. I use wool and sand for that. Got a little bench here for the patrons. 
eventually, this is going to become like an inn as well as my house. You could consider me an innkeeper, maybe. So I've got this big bench thing going on here that people would get their drinks from the bar over there and then come and, and sit here at the communal table. For those who want to have more private conversations, uh, then we have these, these tables right here. This is the fireplace. I did have some logs down there burning, but they went out a little while ago. I'm not sure what's going on with that. This obviously is the, the bar here. Around this little back area, we have a nice little kitchen with our furnace set up and a work area and some cupboards. I like that. I really like these posts that I put in. I think it's important to kind of show support in buildings. Sometimes structures can look a bit gravity defying. I just think this adds a little bit of extra detail. I found out the paintings are in the game at this point, so I put a painting up there. I intend to add a few more uh, when I get around to it. Uh, then we've got a little staircase here. This takes us up to the, the second floor. This is my new workroom. So I moved most of the items from the old place earlier in the episode to here. We've got a little bit of roof storage as well, maybe for bulk storage eventually, that might be nice. This is the uh, the chimney, of course, uh, that goes through the center of the building. This is the third floor. Again, we've got some more of those supporting roof beams going on, but not too much up here. There's, there's not a lot of room. Eventually, I'd like to add some fences and things around here for a little bit of extra detail. And we've got this little section, which is where the rooms are for the inn patrons who are staying the night. I think... Uh, Obviously, they're a bit sparse on the details right now. We don't have a lot of other options. And we have a little tiny staircase in here for coming up to the top. I don't plan to put anything up there, but again, it's it's another crawl space that we could use for storage or, or other things. Overall, I'm, I'm really, really proud of this as a first build. It's got a lot of unique little details into it. It's all well lit. We have our nice little back porch here as well, we didn't look at. Back of the house, a bit more overgrown with the trees. There's that chimney. The uh, the big chimney, of course. You just about see it is right there. I intend to add a few more details to this as we progress through the patches. Mainly I'm missing stairs and fences, which would give me a few more options. Uh, I like this kind of bigger chair design. I think that's interesting. Lots of little details in this to try and make it all come together. And I think it really does. I'm very, very pleased with what we've done so far. And I think this lays down a good marker. Everything else is going to have to be to this standard or better. <laughs> Which is exciting. I have really enjoyed producing this first episode of building with fret hopefully you got something valuable from it and in the next episode we will continue on uh, with that in mind if you have any feedback on the house any questions about the series then please put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them but for me I think that's gonna do it for this episode and I will be back in the next episode of building with fret Obviously, for some more building. Have a good one. See you next time.